श्री अद्वैत गराधर शिवासादि गौ भक्तवृंद की है श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंद राधा कुंद गिरी गोवर्धन की जय वृंदावन धाम की जय नवदीप मायापुर धाम की जय जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जय गंगा देवी की जय यमुना देवी की जय भक्ति देवी की जय तुलसी महारानी की जय समवेत भक्त वृंद की जय श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जय ग्रंथराज श्रीमद्भागवत की जय इस्कान विविधि संस्थापक आचार्य श्री गोपाल की जय गौ प्रेमानंदे ओ गौरी श्री समुद्र गोचिस ओ गौरी श्री समुद्र गोचिस ओ गौरी श्री समुद्र गोचिस ओ गौरी श्री 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 गुरु एन गौरांग जय श्री गोपाल ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथोजय मुदीर नष्ट प्रायद्रेश भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठिकी कृष्णे स्वधामोपगते धनमग्नाधि सह कलौ नष्टृषा पुराणाको धुनोदि ग्रंथराज श्रीमद्भागवत की जय This is Canto 6, Chapter 1, entitled The History of the Life of Ajamila. And today we'll discuss texts number 58 through 60. We have text 58 on the board. So kindly repeat. Ekada asao vanam yatah pitre sandesh कृत द्विज आदाय तत आवृत्त फल पुष्प समित कुशान एक सौवन यात पितृसंदेश आदाय तत आवृत्त फलपुष्प सुषा एक सौवन यात पितृसंदेश आदाय तत आवृत्त फलपुष्प समित कुशान एकादसौवन यात पितृसंदेशज आदाय तथ आवृत्त फलपुष्प समित कुशान पितृसंदेश आदाय तत आवृत्त फलपुष्प सुषान एक सौवन यात एक 
ಫಲಪುಷ್ಪಸಮಿತ್ಕುಶಾನ್ He was just like you two. Is he are you going to end up like him? Pay attention. There's two more verses. I'll just sing these other verses. This is the good part. The darsha kaminam kanchit chudram sahabhujishyaya pitva cha madhumaireyam madaghurnata netraya mataya vishlatham divya vyapetam nirapatrapam kridantam anugayantam hasantam anayantike so how should we do this i guess I'll just recite the word for word you can please repeat. Ekada once upon a time asao this ajamila Now here the pronoun is used asao previous verse the pronoun was ayam This boy he was all these wonderful things the nice qualities that we heard yesterday and today we have asao referring to him It means this person who is so nicely qualified this kind of emphasizes that so then uh, vanam yataha went to the forest pitre of his father sandesha the order krit carrying out dvijaham the brahmana adaya collecting tataha from the forest avrittaha <coughs> returning phala pushpa fruits and flowers samit khoshan two kinds of grass known as samit and kush does anybody know this word samit this famous verse samit pani shrotriyam brahmanishtam What does it mean? When you have to actually cement means a kind of fuel they use for firewood. So he was he was the archetypical good disciple. He was out there collecting not for his guru but for his father, same thing. There are two kinds of parampara. There's shishya parampara and there's shukra parampara. So he's coming in the shukra parampara. Shukra parampara means seminal succession. Whereas shishya parampara means the cyclic succession so he was nicely serving in the way that all the shastras advise this is the innocent part now it gets it gets nasty so then the next i'll just say the word for word myself i'll give you the meanings here the darsha he saw kaminam very lusty kanchit somebody shudram a fourth class man a shudra sah along with bhujishyaya an ordinary maid servant or prostitute pitwa after drinking cha also madhu nectar mairayam made out of the soma flower madha by intoxication aghurnata moving netraya her eyes her eyes not his eyes mattaya intoxicated vishlatanivya whose dress was slackened again this is not his dress nevi is this cord that they tie around their waist that was slackened it's her the problem is hers it seems usually ends up that way vyapetam fallen from proper behavior nirapatrapam without fear of public opinion kridantam engaged in enjoyment 
Anugayantam, singing. Hasantam, smiling. Anaya, with her. Antike, close by. Translation. Once this Brahmana Ajamila, following the order of his father, went to the forest to collect fruit, flowers, and two kinds of grass, called Samit and Kusha. On the way home, he came upon a Shudra, a very lusty fourth-class man who was shamelessly embracing and kissing a prostitute. The Shudra was smiling, singing, and enjoying, as if this were proper behavior. Both the Shudra and the prostitute were drunk. The prostitute's eyes were rolling in intoxication, and her dress had become <coughs> loose. Such was the condition in which Ajamila saw them. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki. While traveling along the public way, Ajamila came upon a fourth class man and a prostitute who are vividly described here. Drunkenness was sometimes manifest even in bygone ages, although not very frequently. In this age of Kali, however, such sin is to be seen everywhere, for people all over the world have become shameless. Long ago, when he saw the scene of, a, of the drunken Shudra and the prostitute, Ajamila, who was a perfect brahmachari, was affected. Nowadays, such sin is visible in so many places, and we must consider, we must consider the position of the brahmachari student who sees such behavior. For such a brahmachari to remain steady is very difficult unless he is extremely strong in following the regulative principles. Nevertheless, if one takes the Krishna consciousness very seriously, he can withstand the provocation created by sin. In our Krishna consciousness movement, we prohibit illicit sex, intoxication, meat-eating, and gambling. In Kali Yuga, a drunk, half-naked woman embracing a drunk man is a very common sight, especially in the Western countries. And restraining oneself after seeing such things is very difficult. Nevertheless, if by the grace of Krishna one adheres to the regulative principles, and chants the Hare Krishna Mantra, Krishna will certainly protect him. Indeed, Krishna says that his devotee is never vanquished. Therefore, all the disciples practicing Krishna consciousness should obediently follow the regulative principles and remain fixed in chanting the holy name of the Lord. Then there need be no fear. Otherwise, one's position is very dangerous, especially in this Kali Yuga. Om Agnana Timirantasya Gnananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yudapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitanscha He Krishna Karuna Sindho 
दीनबंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांशन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमामि हरि प्रिय वंशा कल्पत रुप्यश्च कृपा सिंधुभ्य एव च पतिता नाम पावने भ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्ण कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे This sixth canto we've mentioned before is comprised of the the topic of poshanam. What does poshanam mean? Poshanam? To maintain, but Vishnath Chakravarti Thakur remarks in his introduction to this chapter, in his chapter summary, so to speak, he says that actually poshanam means to give clemency to somebody who's guilty. And who's not guilty in this world? So in his exact language he says, dharma maryado ullanghitam apipalanam. You give, you give kindness, you, you, you protect somebody even though that person has transgressed the ordinary codes of dharma or maybe the transcendental codes of dharma as well. Anyway, that's poshnam. So poshnam tad anugrahaha. It's actually a function of mercy. Now there are three chapters that deal with this ajamila katha, and there are six chapters dealing with vishwarup. There are eight chapters dealing with vritra. Who is vritra the reincarnation of? Chitraketu. And there are uh, another two chapters, I think, of the Marus. What is the common thread? What is the common denominator in all these different chapters of the sixth canto? It has to tie into this topic of poshanam somehow or other. So what are we dealing with? Or who are we dealing with? Ajamila was what kind of person? He was a good person. But there are accidents even on royal roads. We'll talk more about that. So he became a papi. He was a sinful person. And the other chapters all deal more or less with whom? Indra. Indra was what kind of person? Also a demigod, very highly qualified. But he was more than sinful. He was worse than sinful. What was Indra? He, he was an aparadhi. He committed offenses. Specifically, he committed guruvaparad. He offended his spiritual master. So the, the sixth canto is showing us through all these different kathas that we have how Krishna shows mercy even to people who may inadvertently become sinful on occasion, but not too many occasions. <laughs> and also on persons even who are offenders, people who are good people but they've committed offenses. And the examples are Ajamila and Indra. So here we're on the Ajamil story. Now, before we go on from here, I'd like to mention, uh, the other day I was speaking with Haridam Prabhu, and he had a question from the first canto. He said in the first canto, chapter 12, text 29, it's describing how upon the birth of Parikshit Maharaj, uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj was giving in charity to highly qualified brahmanas who were able to foretell the future of the child. They were asking him, what is, tell us what the future of this boy will be. Is he going to represent his noble line? Or obviously the, the worst scenario is that he's going to embarrass or bring shame to his family. Shame, bookmark that word. How do we say shame in Hindi or in Sanskrit? Sharma, also what else? Lajja. Lajja. So... <clears throat> Anyway, Prabhupada remarks in his purport there, he's talking about how Brahmins, even they may not be so spiritual, but they're, 
they're pure and they're intellectual persons. And they, do, they try to help society with their qualifications. So there are many branches of, different branches of knowledge in the Vedas, of which astrology and pathology are two important branches necessary for the common man. So astrology we can understand maybe. What is pathology? Why pathology? What is pathology, first of all? Huh? The diagnosis of a cause or, or, or a cause of a disease. That's very good. Merriam-Webster's dictionary defines it. The study of the essential nature of disease. You have to know what is, what is wrong with you. The other, we went to the doctor and the doctor, I think he asks everybody the same question because when I went he asked me the same question also. He said, do you have diabetes? And the answer is no. And he said, well, how do you know? Have you been tested? <laughs> you see? So we have to know. That is called pathology. That's the primary definition. The secondary definition is the abnormality of structure and function characteristic of a disease. The abnormality of function and structure which is characteristic of a particular disease. That we also find in this material world because we're all diseased. We're infected. And therefore, we have symptoms of that infection. The symptoms of the infection is that our, our good qualities, the kinds of qualities that were mentioned in the previous two texts from yesterday, they become obscured. And they become replaced, really, with ugly qualities due to sin, mainly. Due to bad association in general, because that precipitates sin. Now, there's a third definition of pathology. Deviation, giving rise to social ills. Just like we sometimes hear, uh, she's a pathological liar. <laughs> Mother Earth cannot bear such a person. So these are, these are all, this is what pathology means. And Srila Prabhupada says this, that astrology and pathology are characteristic, are the two important branches of knowledge from Vedic literatures. So he asked me, the question is, is, is this word pathology clarified somewhere in the commentaries? And I, I looked up at least the Gaudiya commentaries, main commentaries that we study. I couldn't find that there's any mention of it. There's mention of Jyotish Shastra, there's mention of, in the verse itself, Jataka Kovidas. Those were expert in Jataka. Jataka means understanding a person's nature on account, by dint of studying his astrological makeup or her astrological makeup. So there's actually nothing in the commentaries that, that would indicate the pathology. So we were, so we were wondering how do we understand what exactly did Prabhupada mean when he said this? For one thing and then maybe even more importantly why did he say it? So we concluded for what our opinion is worth that Prabhupada when he mentions pathology he's talking about understanding a person's samskar. Now, before we move on from that point, I'd like to say that another possibility, a real possibility, is that pathology means the medical science, as it generally does in English language, at least. Because scholars will agree, if you ask them, that the medical literature in Sanskrit, the astrological literature in Sanskrit, and the Dharma literature in Sanskrit, they're all very, very closely related and they follow from the Vedanta literature as well. In other words, all of the Shastras are very, very closely related and they're all consistent with one another. They have the same world view. And that's a very different world view than we generally have by default when we are socialized in the modern world and especially in the modern Western world. That's a big topic. <clears throat> but the point to, to recognize first of all here is that we are in a diseased condition and or we are in a criminal condition because pathology covers both of these possibilities. On account of our disease we are criminal. And Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur mentions in what, what now we've changed gears. We've heard about Ajamila's glorious upbringing in the last verse, yesterday's class. 
Now we're changing gears. He says, after discussing the, the essential truth and the characteristics of dharma, as they were requested to do by the Vishnu Dutas, these Yama Dutas or these uh, yeah, Yama Dutas are now going to talk about Ajamila's deviation from that ideal, his Adharma. So this is an important thing. And Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says the reason that we are changing gears and moving in this direction to look at what happened to Ajamila is to indicate that he was actually culpable for what he did. He was guilty and should have been punished. Now, if you extend from that, knowing the whole story, then you, you appreciate that even though he should have been published, punished, he was not punished. That's, that's the glory of Krishna's mercy. So, generally, the, the, therefore, in, chap, in uh, text number six, we find the necessity of atonement, and both our predecessor acharyas and even Srila Prabhupada himself, uh, they're very uh, clear on this point. I'll just read the final sentence, uh, sentences of Prabhupada's purport, wherein Prabhupada writes, Since people do not know about the next life and the intricate workings of nature, they manufacture their own laws, but they should properly consult the established injunctions of the Shastras and act accordingly. In India, even today, the Hindu community often takes advice from expert scholars regarding how to counteract sinful activities. In Christianity also, there is a process of confession and atonement. Therefore, atonement is required, and atonement must be undergone according to the gravity of one's sinful acts. In fact, in this, I think it's on this verse, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur comments, if you delay in atoning for something that you've done, then your reactions increase and become harder. And Prabhupada points out, I think it's in his purport there, that when you get to old age, you actually cannot perform atonement. It's, it's too late. Either you're not able physically or the reactions have compounded interest, uh, we can say. It's something to consider. Of course, after that, the ultimate resolution to this repeated sinning and washing process is given as gyan. When we come to Gyan, then we, our ignorance is eradicated. And as they say in Hindi, no bans, no bansuri. <laughs> if you don't have a bamboo, you don't have a bamboo flute. <laughs> so Gyan is actually the, the, the way to overcome the tendency to sin, the, the ignorance that is, that is the substrate of sin. But even that Gyan is not enough to establish us fully in our constitution. That is actually bhakti. But how many people can actually follow that? This is the question. It's, an, it's maybe a rhetorical question, but he says it. Kechit. Kechit kevaliya bhaktiya. How many people? Some people. Only some, Prabhupada says. Kechit means some, a few, not very many. We know the statistics from Bhagavad Gita. Where do you fall within those statistics? Where are you going? What's your trajectory? That brings us to the next point. In text 37, while they're having this discussion, the Yama Dutas and the Vishnu Dutas, the Vishnu Dutas point blank tell them that you don't know Dharma. You're just Pretas. <laughs> you tell, they tell this to the Yama Dutas. Who knows what a Preta is? What kind of ghost is a Preta? Baladevi Dabhushan in his Bhagavad Gita commentary defines a preta is somebody who has fallen from his caste duties in a previous life, therefore he has lost the opportunity. He didn't take the opportunity that makes human life unique, therefore he lost the opportunity, he, he remains a hungry ghost. Hungry ghost means he's got desires but he can't fulfill those desires. It's like you want to eat something, but all you can do is look at it. <laughs> it doesn't help very much. That is ghostly existence. And I don't know the, any praman for this, but somebody told me, for what it's worth, that the Yamadutas are generally these pretas. They're so frustrated and so fried with their existence that they go after anybody else who's making the same mistake that they made. I mean, sometimes we see this in the material world. One, at one time, I had to go and see a lawyer and I was 
talking to this lawyer, just kind of checking the person out to see if this person could fulfill my needs. And this person was so bitter and had such a chip on her shoulder about the kind of people that she was obviously prosecuting that I thought, this is just not healthy, I'd better shop elsewhere. You see? So these pretas or the yamadutas sometimes, from what, this is janashruti, mind you. Janashruti means, um, what is it? You know. Yeah, basically. This is hearsay, you can say. Anyway, that, that's just something to consider on the side here. But uh, this is what the Vishnu Dutas at least are telling them. You, 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 you think you're Yamadutas representing dharma, but actually you're just pretas. That's why they were smiling after they heard the Yamadutas trying to explain that you know, we're supposed to take this guy away. So in text 48, it's mentioned very clearly that Yamaraj is capable and he generally observes not necessarily what we've done from our point of view, but he's looking at it over the, in the consideration of the entire trajectory, our current trajectory and the entire sojourn of our material existence. Where are we going? And how long have we decided to go in that direction? Look in the mirror. Why do you have the kind of body that you have? Why do you hold the opinions that you hold? What makes you think the way you think? Why, what makes you the kind of person that you are? This is samskara. It's actually swabhava. In text number 40, 53, sorry, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, we get, we get our current swabhava, our present physical body, the, the sthula shirir, is the effect of the sukshma shirir, the subtle body. And the subtle body's essence is swabhava, the, the nature that we have acquired over so many, many lifetimes in material existence. Now that nature, he says, he identifies it as purva samskarod bhuta, something that is produced as a result of your previous samskaras. Whatever you are now is the result of whatever you've done in the past. And it's important to consider that that's not just a physical reality, it's a psychological reality as well. Something very, very important. So Yamaraj is looking at this thing only. Not only, but he's, the point is that he's, he's able to see this level of existence. <clears throat> and he's, he's making decisions about our future on that basis. So now we're looking at uh, Ajamila's problem. Uh, we finished discussing Dharma. And here we find uh, it, it almost gets into soft porn, <laughs> this part of the Bhagavatam. Um, you know, she's partially dressed, they're both intoxicated. This is a very common thing, especially in the Western countries, Prabhupada has written in his purport. But it's very, very destructive. Why? Because it plants the some scars into your mind that may not have been there previously. And what's even worse than that, when we become jaded or become what's the word, it, it, it no longer uh, affects us that much, that means that our samskars have been changed. When we take these things as normal or acceptable in any way, then that means our samskars have already changed. We've already become buried deeper in this ugliness, ugra karma. So Ajamila Although he had every good training in this birth, something awoke within his heart when he saw this, the darsha. Well, I'm going to skip ahead just for a moment to text number 65 because it's a very powerful idea here. Uh, the word is used when he saw the glances of this swairani. There, there's some very rich words are used to describe this woman. Three words. Uh, the word in today's verse is <clears throat> Pujishya. Pujishya. What does Pujishya mean? Can anybody guess? Those who know Sanskrit. Puj. What does Puj mean? to enjoy. It, the, the verbal root is bhuj, which means to, it means a lot of things. It means to enjoy something, it means to plunder something, 
It means to exploit something, to take advantage or use something. All these words are used in reference to this woman. She's, she's someone who's meant to be enjoyed, someone who's meant to be taken advantage of, who's meant to be exploited even. Very rich word. And in the commentaries, this word has been glossed by Sridhar Swami as bhogastri, bhogastri, a woman who is to be enjoyed. And obviously that means, I mean, in Prabhupada's word for word, and even in his translation, I think it's not so clear. He's kind of ambivalent. Either she's a maidservant or she's a prostitute. By the time he writes his purport, he's made a clear distinction. She's a prostitute. <laughs> So bhujishya means that. And, and the other word is used here, swairini, in text 65. Swairini means a woman who goes on her own, an independent woman. This is another very telling vocabulary. Because <clears throat> dasi, she's a dasi, means she's dependent. Now in America and also in Europe, does everybody know that there's like a $28 billion slave trade going on worldwide? Especially in women, trafficked women. But also other people as well. People who are dependent. People who are not. People who are in a compromised or vulnerable situation. Somebody wants their green card, we call it in America. Or somebody wants to get into the European Union. Now they're just, they're breaking down the doors, is it not? They're all fleeing from a very repressive government in Syria. And what happens to these people? Even the boys take to prostitution. Compare that to what Ajamilad was doing. They, they will do anything, you see? Because they're dasits, they're dasis. And all these words have been used to describe this woman. Because she was independent, I mean, because she was a, an independent dependent, this is the point. Therefore, she became Bhujishya, Bhogastri. She became a public woman. Therefore, it's significant, as we mentioned earlier, that the words that are described here, her eyes are rolling in intoxication. Her dress is becoming loose. She is the one being taken advantage of. Because that's what it means to be a woman, fortunately or unfortunately. Of course, in Krishna consciousness, uh, someone once asked uh, one of Prabhupada's godbrothers, what is the position of women in Krishna consciousness? And he said, women have the superior position in Krishna consciousness because they recognize their dependence, because they have faithful nature, they are, they're sub more submissive, they have soft hearts. These are things that we find mentioned in Srila Prabhupada's books. But on account of those same advantages, they can be taken advantage of. They can be abused. This is the thing. Therefore, poshanam, palanam, they have to be protected. This is a recurring theme throughout Srila Prabhupada's books. Anyway, I don't want to dilate too much on that, but um, <clears throat> this is what Ajamila saw. He saw these two in intoxication and basically illicit sex. So, what happened then? Hrithayavashaha, this next verse I think describes. Hrithayavasham. He was under the control of what was already lying in his own heart. Man is like butter, woman is like. So, this is the, we, we, you know, we like to say that the, the women are nine times more lusty than the men, but actually the men are nine times more vulnerable than the women. That's why they tend to be the ones who commit these crimes, isn't it? The, the, it's the men who are raping, not the women because they're like butter. So, poor Ajamila, even though he was of good character, of good family, and had good training, he did not recognize what was already in his heart. And he could not overcome the power of what was lying in his heart. Literally, hritchaya means what is lying in the heart. It's a very interesting choice of words. It's the exact same choice of words that Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami chooses when he's de describing the life history of another great devotee, Bilva Mangala Thakur. Bilva Mangala Thakur was in South India, near Pandharpur, and 
he was also a very good Brahmin in the beginning, but he somehow he became attached to a prostitute on account of Hritsaya, that thing which was lying in the heart. So Krishna gives us the information how to strategize with our disease. Remember we were talking about pathology. You have to recognize what is your diagnosis. That's why it's a good idea to understand your prarabdha karma for this life. If not also your samskaras. So, <clears throat> Krishna tells us if you want to strategize how to get out of this maya energy, then you have to understand that your enemy is sitting in three places. What are the three places in which our enemy is sitting? Seated? Senses, mind, intellect. All three. And here the word is very nicely used. Svairanya apanga vidadhi. This is in text number 65. As soon as she looked at him, Ajamila's intelligence was finished. And there's, I'd like to read, there's a, there's a nice Tamil poem. It's in translation, of course, because I cannot read Tamil. Ancient, ancient poem from the Sangam period, Tamil literature. Ancient, ancient form. The poet writes, I had, as you would wish, courtesy, friendship, honor, usefulness, culture, and a considerate way with others. I had them all before I set eyes on the cold, rich eyes of this woman. So it's not a new thing. It's lying in everybody's heart. Ajamila's test is here, as we heard a few days ago. Uh, his example is given to us to show. In the Bhagavatam, we, we many times we, we hear, there are examples that we should emulate, and there are examples that we should not follow, both in the Bhagavatam. So poor Ajamila, he was not able to control his mind, as Prabhupada says in his purport, he was not strict enough in following the regular principles and he, he, he was subdued, he was overtaken by what was already in his own heart. Now, <clears throat> what happened as a result of that? Nirapatrapam and Vyapetam. These are two very significant words. Prabhupada has defined them here in his, perp in his word for word. Nirapatrapa means without fear of public opinion and vyapeta means fallen from proper behavior. That's coming from uh, the predecessor acharyas. I think it's Viraragava acharya says vilajam. Vyapeta means vilajam. Vishana Chakravarti Thakur. Vilajam means no shame. Therefore we see shameless is the word that Prabhupada has used in his purport. And Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says, Loka Bhaya Rahitam. They're not freed from any fear of public opinion. I mean, that's, in some sense, they were afraid. That's why they're out in the middle of the forest doing this. <laughs> but now Prabhupada says people are so shameless, they don't even see there's anything wrong. A couple of days ago, a Catholic priest came out and announced to the Vatican that I'm gay. I've got a boyfriend. I, a high, highly placed place preach in the uh, priest in the Vatican of course somebody in the Vatican has enough sense that he was immediately dismissed and now he's gone on a social political activist cause but uh, anyway don't want to get too far afield uh, the idea is that nirapatrapam vilajam we, we should have some shame there's one thing I've noticed in the Srimad Bhagavatam studying many different stories is that People get Krishna's mercy on account of qualities that they display vis-a-vis -vis the Supreme Lord. If someone so shows some shame, he can be freed from this problem, the Rajamila. So to develop mundane virtues is not necessarily a bad idea, but they have to be tempered by knowledge. <coughs> and more importantly, they have to be engaged in devotional service. Vasudev displayed great honesty. Bali Maharaj displayed great commitment to his word. Huh? Like this. We, we find many examples like this. 
These qualities they come naturally by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So that brings us to the final point. What do we do? I mean, if a Jamila, with all of his qualifications, in a previous age, with a good family and all good qualities, all the things we read about yesterday, if he's not strong enough, then what is the chance for us? If we are listening carefully, we have noticed the way that Prabhupada states this in his purport. I'll just go over it again quickly. Srila Prabhupada says, <clears throat> To remain steady is very difficult unless one is extremely strong in following the regulative principles. If one takes the Krishna consciousness very seriously, he with, can, can withstand the provocation created by sin. Now, it's not necessarily directly created by sin, although sin does directly create problems. It's, even, it, it's indirectly created by someone else's sinful activity as well. That was what happened to Ajamila. And how much worse is it today? when sin is so pervasive. Our problems are created by sin. Not necessarily even our own sins. Maybe from someone else's sin. It's like the psychologists often argue. Is it nature or is it nurture? <laughs> that causes us to act in the ways that we act. It's actually both. Sangat sanjayate kama. Or uh, karanam guna sangosya. When we associate with the particular modes of nature that are prominent in our vata varana, in our environment, then we are going to be impelled. That's already been described by the Yamadutas in the previous verses. Nobody cannot be impelled. But if we have Krishna's grace, and this is something that Prabhupada very carefully qualifies here, he says, if by the grace of Krishna one adheres to the regulative principles and chants the Hare Krishna mantra, Krishna will certainly protect him. So we, this is the monkey philosophy. We have two kinds of Sri Vaishnavas, Vardagalais and Tengalais. So one says that the kitten is automatically carried by the mother cat, and that's true. Here in Vrindavan we see that the baby monkeys, they have to hold on to the mother monkey. That's also true. It's actually both of them. But we have to do our part, and that is to adhere to the instructions of the spiritual master. And especially this instruction to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And Prabhupada says very unequivocally, if we are very serious about this, then Krishna will certainly protect us. By His grace, Mat Prasada Trishyasi, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. Everybody know that verse? Machitta Sarva Durgani. Sarva Durgani. Every kind of obstacle can be thrown at you by Maya. She will do it. Just wait if you don't believe me. <laughs> but Krishna says, if you hear from me and you follow what I'm saying without false ego, then Mat Prasara Tishyasi. You will cross over all these things by my grace. This is the key. You cannot do anything on your own. We heard this yesterday. We're already fallen. What is the fear of falling down? But by Krishna's grace, we can be elevated. So when we're chanting Hare Krishna, I'm going to say one more thing, because it's late. We can adopt the spirit that was, is expressed in a very beautiful poem by the ancient Maithili poet Vidyapati. Vidyapati was very favorite of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, exalted Vaishnava uh, poet. He said, Madhava bahuta minati karitoi, dei tulasitila deha samarpino. Daya jani na chara bimoy. He says, Madhava, I'm beseeching you repeatedly. I'm offering you my body as if a, a simple tulasi leaf. Because I know your mercy. I know that you won't reject me. Gunai te dosa. Guna lesha na paobi. Jaba tumhu karabi if you consider, if you do an analysis of my qualities and flaws, you'll find that I don't even have a speck of any good qualities. I'm only doshas, only flaws. But, Tuhu Jagannatha, Jagate Kahaose, the whole world calls you Jagannath. Jagabahir Nahimuichha. I'm not outside of this universe. You'll not reject me. Kie Manusha. 
पशु पखी जे जनमी है अथवा कीट पटंगे इवन अ पोएट लाइक विद्यापति इज नॉट श्योर वेर हीज गोइंग दिस इज अ पॉइंट टू टेक नोट ऑफ दैट इज द बेस इज ऑफ ह्यूमिलिटी वी डोंट नो वट इज कृष्ण इज प्लान सो ही सेज इफ आई हैव टू टेक अन अदर ह्यूमन बर्थ और मे बी आल टेक बर्थ इज एन एनिमल और मे बी अ बर्ड और मे बी आल इवन टेक बर्थ इज एन इंसेक्ट और अ फ्लाय He said, "But one thing, karma vipake, gata gati puna puna. After having wasted so many lifetimes, one after another, without having achieved my goal, he says, 'At least mati rahutwa parasange. At least somehow or other, keep me connected with you.' This is his prayer. Bhaniye vidyapati atishaya kathara. Vidyapati is is totally disturbed." totally dejected and discouraged embarrassed taraitet iha bhava sindhu he prays please take me over this bhava sindhu this ocean of material existence tuwa para pallava kari avalambana i take shelter i take the support of your lotus feet tila eka deha dina bandhu my dear lord dina bandhu this body after all one tulsi leaf is not a very significant thing beautiful poem yeah. it reminds us of this verse from the bhagavatam jayam sada pariva bhavagnam abhishta doham very similar anyway there's so much more we can say but it's time to stop now uh, maybe if anybody has one or two questions only we can take them. yes maharaj I actually have a lot of things i want to ask you <laughs> <laughs> That's a very very good question. I was reading in this whole chapter the, all the different commentaries. Not that I'm making plans. <laughs> <laughs> um and you know while while there's discussion of Indra and what happened to him it it would seem as if he he was just he was meant to suffer in this way but he, Indra had an option. Either I can do something to counteract that's called prayaschita. that within the karma kandya vichar either i can do something to counteract this reaction or i can accept the reaction and indra chose to accept the reaction now that's not necessarily directly relating to your question but it it, it seems to me that that yamaraj is just giving out this justice without interfering in much the same way that paramatma doesn't interfere except through his causeless mercy or through the vaishnavas it, it seems that way but i don't know uh, to be honest i i can't can ask the question you know uh anything else okay w- one more thank you very much i know uh uh it was just interesting to know uh after this class what actually the wind may take respect of all the wonderful things I didn't hear your question sorry I said in respect of all the analysis you did over the uh, issue of Ajame so I'm asking what do we think of what do we meditate on okay yeah what do we meditate on I still somebody's going to have to help me huh. what is our take away what is our okay what's the take home message on this What is what is what is your homework? I tried to say in the in the end we have to adopt this mood and chant Hare Krishna in full surrender seriously and then Krishna's mercy will deliver us. It's a simple process. Most of us don't simply take it. <laughs> we mix it. <laughs> That's the problem. But Prabhupada assures us in this purport Krishna will certainly deliver us from all these disadvantages that overwhelm us but we have to do our part we have to hold on to those instructions of the spiritual master and be serious and mainly through chanting everything is affected through the holy name chanting 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 okay
Yeah. Die. All glory to Shiva the whole time.